Let's go ahead and get started with this week's set of vocabulary. This list will be test terms part seven. We'll have our 10 words and definitions as usual, beginning with term number one, relationship. Two, phrase. Three, description. Four, difference. Five, similar. Six, reveal. Seven, examine. Eight, explicit. Nine, implicit. And 10, portion. Term number one is going to be relationship. When you think of relationship, the definition is going to be a state involving dealings between people, parties, or ideas. Think of the word relate when you think of relationship in regards to a test or something that you're taking. Some questions are going to ask you how two different things relate or interact with each other. For example, a question could ask, which statement best describes the relationship between the passages? It's asking how those passages connect to each other or what they share in common between each other. Think of it as a connection or how they deal with each other. Turn number two is going to be phrase, which is an expression consisting of one or more words. If you're reading a passage, like a longer piece of writing, you may be asked to look at a specific phrase or set of words within it. Sometimes these may be quotes, for example. You're most likely going to see this word in questions that quote the phrase you are being asked to analyze and look at deeper. Just think of it as a short collection of words together instead of the whole passage, and you'll be in pretty good shape here. Turn number three is going to be description. You know that a description is a statement that represents something in words. A description uses language to illustrate the characteristics of a person or thing. Descriptions in literary text can paint a picture in a reader's mind of what something looks like or feels like. Descriptions usually include adjectives or verbs to help them describe. If I asked you to pause the video and to look around at the classroom or your room or whatever room you're in right now and describe it or to give a description, in your mind you're, all, you're thinking about words that you can use to tell whoever asked you that question what that place looks like, what that room looks like, the different things in it, and what makes it an individually unique room. Term number four is going to be difference. A difference is the quality of being unlike or dissimilar. Difference has many meanings, but the one we're looking at is used to describe things that are not the same. When comparing two ideas, or maybe two different passages you have to read on a test, you might be asked to identify the similarities, the things that are the same, and the differences, the things that are different. And stemming off from that, we have term number five, similar. Similar means having the same or nearly the same characteristics. This is another word that will come up when you're comparing things. Two things are similar when they are almost the same. When you notice that two things are similar, you're identifying the similarities or the sameness between those two things. When you think similar, think what's the same? Term number six is reveal. To reveal is to make known to the public information previously kept secret. When you reveal something, you make known something that was hidden, unknown, or secret. Reveal can be used as a synonym for show. If you're asked what a particular action reveals about a character in a story, or what part of a graph reveals about a set of data you've been working with, you need to identify what the action that character did or what that graph shows, what it reveals. Usually when you're doing something like analyzing a character, you need to look deeper at that character and take something that is maybe not always apparent or able to be seen by everybody and show everybody else what that character's thoughts, feelings, actions, etc. show about that character. Like class, when you're doing something like a math problem, you're trying to figure out and solve that problem so you can reveal it to the teacher or to whoever's reviewing your work. In order to reveal what that is, you're going to need to first examine it. Turn number seven is examine, and it means to consider in detail in order to discover essential features. To carry out an in-depth discussion or investigation of something is to examine it in detail. Other words related to examine include study, investigate, and analyze it. When you examine, you take a deeper look at something, usually involving you taking your time and pulling out information, like I said earlier with reveal, that isn't always able to be seen by everybody, especially without taking time to examine it and to look at it first. Coming up to one of our more difficult terms for this week, we have term number eight, explicit. 
Explicit means precisely and clearly expressed or readily observable. Let's break that definition down. Explicit, explicit points are made directly. You won't have to read between the lines to find them in a reading passage. If something is explicitly stated, they come out and say it. They're not trying to hide it. You're not going to have to examine deeply to find out what they're trying to say. If a question asks you about what a writer has explicitly stated, that question wants you to head to the passage and find that because it's going to be staring you right in the face. It's going to be very clearly stated there. Explicit is the opposite of implicit, which we're going to look at next. Number nine, implicit means suggested, though not directly expressed or directly written down. Can you see the word imply in the word implicit, the I-M-P at the beginning? That can help you remember what this word means. It can help you remember that implicit is an adjective to describe something that is not directly stated. You may have to figure out the implicit message conveyed by a passage or author. If you're asked to find the implicit meaning of something, you're being asked to find out what the author is implying in this passage. They don't want to come out and say it, they want you to examine it, analyze it, and understand what their hidden message is there, what their implicit message is. Number 10 is portion, something determined in relation to a thing that includes it. A portion is just a section of something, or an amount of something. Questions on tests may refer to the underlined portion of a passage, and it's just saying you just need to examine the underlined part of that passage, that portion or part of a whole. Think of portion as sort of a part of something. If you're given a portion of mashed potatoes at your lunch, that's just a small portion of the giant vat of mashed potatoes they have in the cafeteria. And that's an introduction to the 10 words from our test terms part seven list. If you need to go back at any time to hear what those words sound like or to get a brief definition for them, feel free to do so.